Welcome to the Extended Bench, your YouTube home for all things rugby league news, analysis, history, and opinion. Subscribe so you don't miss a video and give us a thumbs up. The Extended Bench is part of the Rugby League Monthly Network, which includes a monthly online digital magazine available at rugbyleaguemonthly.com and the daily podcast Rugby League Daily, which airs during the NRL season. All links are down below in the description. Let's get into it. Well, 2021 wasn't as bad as 2020 for the Broncos, but it wasn't exactly the revival they were hoping for under Kevin Walters. They leaked points, couldn't really score points, and their season had an air of someone flailing their arms around hoping someone else could save them. No one did, and they finished 14th. There are plenty of places to start, but I'm going to focus on the recruitment of Adam Reynolds, as I mentioned in the South Sydney preview. The Rabbitohs number 7 is one of the premier halfbacks in the competition, and his move is the biggest in the game since Cooper Cronk left Melbourne. He's played in two grand finals, won a premiership, and played Origin. He's the type of player an inexperienced Broncos side really needs. In 2021, the Broncos managed 220 attacking kicks, which placed them 9th in the competition, producing 30 goal line dropouts, which put them 13th. Souths may have only launched 200 attacking kicks, but they forced a goal line dropout on 41 occasions. The Rabbitohs were also very effective in getting downfield, managing 724 tackles in their opponent's 20, which put them third in the competition, while the Broncos were dead last with 528. Now, while Reynolds isn't the one hitting the ball up, he's the one marshalling his side, getting them to where they need to be. For instance, he kicked three 40 20s last year. The Broncos' entire team managed two, one from Albert Kelly and one from Anthony Milford. He's going to add a maturity to the way Brisbane played that they haven't had in quite a while. In fact, the last Brisbane half to play Origin was Anthony Milford in 2018, which was under Wayne Bennett, and they finished sixth that season. The last time you could say they had a nailed on organising number seven was Ben Hunt. So Reynolds' importance can't be overstated, and is even more apparent given the Broncos have named him captain for the year. As for the rest of the squad, the Broncos have some talent to work with. A fit Katoni Stad will be a massive benefit to them, as he'll provide a clear attacking threat on one side of the field, while Payne Haas is one of the best props in the game. The recruitment of Kurt Capewell was an astute buy. He's the type of player the forward pack will benefit having around. He's won an Origin Series, won a Premiership, and he knows what it takes to win. For a very young Brisbane pack, he'll be he'll provide plenty of experience there. Pat Carrigan will also be ready to go for the start of the season, so he'll provide yet more firepower in the forwards. One of Brisbane's key problems last season was remaining in tight arm wrestles, and much of that was down to a very inexperienced forward pack alongside a rotating array of halves. Unfortunately, the Broncos did lose Xavier Coates, who provided a very good aerial threat, and so they'll be looking for a replacement. Fullback Tezzy New will also miss the start of the season due to a hamstring injury, so we could very well see Jermaine Isako back there with Jordan Pereira moving onto the wing. It's not going to be a smooth sailing year for Brisbane. They have a lot of new players, and we still don't know who will be the preferred 5 8 Kevin Walters could choose any of Albert Kelly, Tyson Gamble, Billy Walters, or even lob for youngster Ezra Mann. They also have young gun Selwyn Cobbo, who will be raring for an extended run in the back line, and you really hope he's going to get a, an early crack on the wing, possibly supplanting Jordan Pereira there. But while I see plenty of improvement across the park, I think there are a few pieces missing. Their unstable spine is one issue, plus the fact that Jake Turpin doesn't offer a huge amount out of dummy half. He's relatively quick in his service, and he's also a very good defender, but he's also a couple of steps away from that elite level that will definitely rock, rocket the Broncos into top eight, even top six contention. So I am tipping them for a massive improvement this year, so they'll be a much tougher team, and they'll be challenging for the eight, but I do see them finishing ninth. 